Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Debbie Rowley. And you're listening to the midweek version of Fiber Talk, the twice-weekly podcast for the needlework artist. Hey, Debbie, it's been ages. It has been. Like forever. It seems that way. It literally, I think, has been just about forever. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Well, yeah, see, and see, since we last talked, I think I had just gotten back from a and National Seminar in Houston. Yep. And I have been to Chicago to do a pilot class, or not, not a pilot class, to teach a class. And I think I went somewhere else. And I'm going to St. Louis this week, so. Oh, good for you. Yeah. The, uh, um, EGA? EGA National. I'm not teaching, but I... Um, I'm going there for some meetings and, you know, a couple of things. I am the current president of the National Embroidery Teachers Association. And we have two meetings. One is at a and National and one is at EGA National. And as it worked out, only Curdy Biggs is the treasurer. And she is the only one of the officers who was going to be there. And so I thought, okay, I can drive to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And so... I thought, okay, I'll just drive to St. Louis. I'll do, I'll chair the meeting for the, for Netta. I'll do teacher showcase and I will do merchandise night. So, and hang out and not really have any big responsibilities, which is a change. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when I go to seminar, you know, I'm running from one thing to the next. And yeah. so I will not be. And so I'm going to take some stitching with me to work on. Uh, in my hotel room, I will chat with friends. I've got some other people that I need to look up and discuss things with. And so, yeah, going to EGA. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. A, a now, seminar so without means, work. That's, that's pretty yeah, good. <laughs> that is pretty good, but it also means I have to pay for it. Yeah. yeah anyway. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. So and like next year, EGA national, which I'm also not teaching for, is in Boston, and I wouldn't even consider going to Boston. So, really, not because I have anything against Boston, but because I'd have to fly and blah blah and all this oh. other. And you know, it's easier to think about buying a couple of tanks of gas, yeah, and listening to podcasts and CDs and stuff in the car and driving over and then driving back and, and I've made that drive before. It's not that difficult. So yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't drive to Boston. I don't want to fly to Boston. <laughs> so, you know, it, yeah. if it turns out that Curdy's the only officer at next year's EGA national, well, she's just on her own. She'll have to do all the reports and chair the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice time. See, I move, yeah. I move small mountains to get to the Northeast. Oh, I'll, I'll go to Boston anytime. I love that. Well, I'd, I'd love to go, but I don't want to pay for it. So oh, yeah. There you, there you go. And the our our uh, embroidery teachers association, um, <clears throat> we don't have a big budget, but we do have some money. And the officers and I decided that it would be a good thing to do some publicity. And so I need. I thought, you know, I can email everybody. I think it'd be better to talk to people in person. Mm -hmm. And. So it was very, the proposals that we made were very well received at ANG National. And so I thought, okay, I'll just go to EGA National. And, you know, next year there may or may not be any pressing business that NETA has to deal with. But I thought this year there was and that it was important enough to make the effort. So I'm going to go and hopefully I'll make enough money with Merchandise Night to pay for my trip. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, in St. Louis this time of year is not a bad place to be, I got to say. It's um, well, I generally pretty Louis. nice. I've always liked it. Yeah. Yeah, you can. And I'll be driving through Missouri, and the leaves changing, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It'll be pretty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you uh, you try St. Louis in August, you can keep it. But um, yeah, this time of year, no, it's pretty no nice. Different from where I am. Hmm. It's no different from where I am. No, I know, and you can in keep August. it. August. <laughs> you can keep it. <laughs> yeah, have a nice day. <laughs> oh, now. No, heat and humidity. <laughs> heat and humidity, not my cup of tea. Mm -mm. But I love it. Yeah. Applause to you. Give me uh, 20 below and a <laughs> stiff wind out of the north, and I'll be happier than that heat. Yep. No, yeah. you can absolutely keep that, and I'm not coming anywhere close to that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, that'll be fun. Yeah, no, I I, yeah. I had thought about going going to the EGA thing because I can stay for free at uh, the at our daughter's, but um, right. Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work this yeah. time. Yeah, and of course, yeah, that's, it know, never works. It never works when it's within reasonable distance, but then it always works when it's you know a four hour flight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, I, I'll go. I'll say hi to friends and do a little networking and a little uh, planning and things like that. Yep. And uh, yeah. Well, all and right. I'm exhausted because I work all day every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey. Yeah, it's a good kind of exhausted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we need to get a couple housekeeping things in here. Needle minders at the shop page at wetalkfiber.com if you're interested. Got the one inch and the two inch. Uh, happy to get those to you. And then uh, also, you'll want to go to either wetalkfiber.com or our YouTube channel. And I will have up the instagram live show that von and i did last friday so people have been asking for that and uh should have it up by the time you hear this so you can hear it instagram live i i check all the buttons that say automatically save it and archive it and it doesn't do it and so then i get to replay the whole here here's a tip here's a trick uh replay the whole thing which was an hour and a half of live show. If you replay it on your phone, your iPhone or iPad, there's a button you can hit to record what's on the screen of the iPhone. So you can record the whole thing, sound and everything. Oh. And that's a, so I'll let, I'll just let my tech guy handle that. Yeah. You, yeah, you got people. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, like if 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 yeah. there's a if there's a YouTube thing you want recorded mm-hmm. of anything, yeah, just put it on your phone or your iPad and hit record screen, and it will record sound and everything. Because you know, like YouTube's, you can't download, uh, right? Unless I think you can if you buy the premium package. But you know, just regular. Right. Nope, you can record that thing and have it for your own right there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Whether you have access to internet at that particular moment or not right right and another thing that's cool about that is if you want to show somebody how to do something Mm -hmm. you just do it you hit record and then do it on your phone like here's how to get a file or here's how to open a picture or annotate or whatever you just Mm -hmm. hit record and then everything you do on that screen gets recorded and then you can send them a file cool yeah learned that the hard way but it's a good thing to know Mm -hmm. yeah that's very useful info yeah so I had to do that with the entire Instagram live files, and now I have to put them together, make a video, and upload it, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, um, when we're recording this on Monday, I'm working on it, and it'll be up. So by Wednesday, when people hear this, it'll be available for those who have been asking and want to hear the Gary and Bana, whatever it is we do. Yes. <laughs> always entertaining. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that is we do, but it's fun doing it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's always entertaining. <laughs> yeah. And and learned and learned that there is a limit to how long you can do a live show because we got cut off. <laughs> Ew, yeah, I don't okay. it was like a, I don't know if it was an hour or hour and change and then it just shuts you off. And so then we had to start a second show, which um so good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also useful info. Yep. So there's there it is. Those are those two things. So they'll be up. So I'm most curious. Now you moved okay. you moved to Oklahoma from the warm right. climes of Arkansas, right? And uh, been a bit of an ordeal getting to the house and getting everything together, but uh, right. pretty much have it together now. But one of the real benefits was a huge area for your office and stitching and so on and so forth. And so I'm mo- yeah. I've been most curious about, you know, do you have that set up? But even more so, what things have you done? What have you learned that have made you better organized, given you more space, made you more efficient that people might do okay. in their own space? As I look at my stitching table that <laughs> is constantly covered with stuff, no matter how much I clean it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's a work in progress. I have everything <laughs> okay. in my office, but... 
because of, of when we moved and how we moved and the things that were going on at the time that we moved, um, usually when you move, you go through everything before you pack and usually. pay to have mm-hmm. someone move it. Yeah, usually. And yeah. I was not able to do that. I was just throwing things in boxes. I wasn't, didn't have a chance to go through it because um, I basically had to do the move by myself because Rod was already here taking care of his mother. And he was able to, um, so from February until June, he was in Conway maybe a total of a week and a half, but not all at once. Yeah. <laughs> And so we were able to squeeze in someone to come and take care of his mother so that he could come and go through his garage and work area because I had no clue. It it would have all been packed and moved and then discarded once we got here. (laughs) Yeah. So he was able to do that, that part in advance. But, um, and then my sister who was a saint and an absolutely wonderful person came and helped me pack for three days. Ooh. And then she came and helped me unpack for three days. Oh, you owe and her for decades. <laughs> bless her heart. She said, you know, I said, I, I, just, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you doing this. And she said, well, it's what sisters do. And I looked her square in the face and said, I would not have done it for you. <laughs> because, you know, I have moved, let's see, lived in Conway for 23 years. Before that, I lived where I had lived for 14 years. I don't, I, I don't like to move. I don't move easily. It's kicking and screaming every time. And I just, you know, I know people that move every year. God bless them. That's not me. I just, I absolutely hate it. And, you know, there's still things we've unpacked, almost all of the boxes. And there are still things we have not found. <laughs> Those things. We don't know uh-huh. where they are. And we have not found them. We have no clue where they might be. Anyway, so back to my office. So everything is in my office, and I um, I bought a new chair oh. to sit in to stitch and do computer work, and it's a high leg recline that goes under it with no problem. Ah. And so, you know, because I like to stitch in a recliner yeah. with my feet up. And so if you have a regular recliner, you know, it's got long metal bars that connect with the base of the floor and you cannot get a system or stand up under there. Well, this one is a high leg one. It sits about the legs or about, I want to say six inches, six to eight inches off the floor between the floor and the base of the chair. Oh my. So my system four goes right under it. No big deal at all. And so really pleased by that but all of the other stuff that's in my office is shoved and tucked and crammed (laughs) and i'm having to go through and do the calling and the organizing that a reasonable sane person would have done in advance of moving so so my question of what what fine organizational things have you put in place is to be answered Nothing. somewhere down the road. Okay. No. Yes. Yes. So um, one of the things that I have that I latched onto several years ago when I was still in Conway are um, six drawer file cabinets. The drawers are relatively shallow and all the drawers are the same depth and they're all plastic, and I got them from Office Depot. Okay, so what I like about these is I can stack them. Mm-hmm. So I have a double stack. Do I have 12 of them? I have 12 or 14 of them all stacked up, and they make like a, a half wall in my office. And I need to go through all of those. Because oh, Debbie. <laughs> thread is just shoved in there like you would not believe. Thread and beads and tools and stuff. And it all needs to be gone through and organized. Um, the cards for Rainbow Gallery sit very nicely in the depth of these drawers. So they're oh. really nice. Uh, 
and I've got drawers and drawers and drawers. You know, I've got three drawers of Splendor and I've got a drawer of neon rays and I have a drawer, maybe a drawer and a half of silk plumé braid and, you know, stuff. And then the Krynic reels also go very nicely. They stand up, and and so I have them standing so I can see the end, the number end. Right, right. And I've got two drawers of blending filament and three drawers of number four braid and three drawers of number eight braid. <laughs> yeah, but these, but that's good to know. So this is a this is a Home Depot then, because you know, like those uh, those office. Rainbow Gallery cards are a pain in the butt. Right. No, it's yeah. Office Depot. And oh, oh, each one of the, yeah, the, the file cabinets were each about, I want to say $35, $45, so not horribly expensive. And they come with casters, so you can put them on casters and roll them around. I don't do that because if you have them on casters, then you can't stack them. Right. But, you know, they're, they're a not unreasonable depth. The drawers are easy to pull out if I need to pull the whole drawer out to look at what's in it. Mm -hmm. They're easy to pull out and then put back in. And so sometimes when I am kitting a new project or pulling threads for a new project or things like that, I might have two or three of these drawers sitting out on my work table. Yeah. Hmm. And then I get through them and I can just shove them all back in where they need to go. So they really work out quite well. And I've, I've acquired over time, I think I have 12, I may have 14, I'm not sure. But anyway, I've got a bunch of them. Yeah. And then I, I have a cabinet that has adjustable shelves in it that is just chock-a-block full of like fiber fill and material and um, other things that I have acquired over the years that, you know, I'll see something, I'll think, oh, wouldn't this be cute to stitch something to go around this or to design something using this or whatever, mm -hmm. or this is a nice material that I can use for the back of an ornament or, or whatever. And so, and I don't know why I have so much fiber fill. I don't know why, <laughs> 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 but I do. And, um, beads and stuff like that and then i've got um so people need to keep an eye out for this because the time is coming up when you'll be able to find these they are um plastic bins that you can put gift wrap in and they come in two sizes there's a short one and a tall one the tall one is perfect for 40 inch rolls of canvas no oh. and, and so i've got two of those and then I've got a shorter one where I um, have cut some off of the roll and it's no longer 40 inches long and so those go in there so I've got those now is that with, got, with the lid lid on it too yeah yeah they have a clear lid uh, like the base of these because it's usually around Christmas time when you can find these the base of it is red the top of it is clear and the taller ones have a, a, a lid that snaps down onto it. But then inside the lid, there's a little thing that you can pick up. So you don't have to take the whole lid off. You can pull this hatch up. I, it's hard to describe like a, a window that you can pull up to pull out your canvas without opening the whole thing. Mm. But they all stand up really nicely in there to where you can see exactly what you have. And so I've got three of those. Then I've got this lock, this cabinet that's got all this junk now we're, in wait, it. Let's go, back to, let's go back to the roll holder thing because that's okay. interesting to me because I have several. I mean, I don't have rolls of canvas like you do because I don't have that need. But I have lots of pieces that are in rolls, and I have them strategically stacked or put in drawers so they don't get crushed and creased. And right. so even a shorter one of these would be very valuable uh, to keep dust and dirt off, right. but to keep those well, things from getting creased. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of floor space, which I like, you mm -hmm. know, it's not like a long, low drawer thing. It, it, it stands up. It's designed to stand up rolls of gift wrap in. Hmm. All right. So, uh, They're so like basi two bucks. basically just go to where they sell gift wrap and poke around until you find yeah. one. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I got mine at Walmart. 
Yeah. I'm sure Target. I'm sure Target will have them. I have not seen them at Hobby Lobby or places like that because they usually don't have those kind of large plastic things like that. But at at uh, Walmart and um, Target, you could probably find them at Target in the Christmas gift wrap. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. See, that's helpful right there. Because, yeah, I wouldn't mind having a box like that because I could clear out a lot of really wasted space just by getting those all out and into a box. Yeah. yeah. And then they all stand up. They're all protected. And, yeah. Hmm. It works great. Okay. There we go. I knew I'd learn something out of you today. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and these see this these drawer things intrigue me, and of course everybody uh, you know everybody has their own way of storing stuff, and they go to the, what is the box and container store, the container store, yeah, yeah, the container store, million things. I've never even been in a container yeah. store. I've I've been to them. I it see. I don't I don't have the patience to do all that poking around and shopping. I just don't. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. I I see what somebody else did and go, oh, that's a great idea, and and incorporate it into my own. Yeah. Uh, what I need. But that, yeah, so, okay, so that helps me because th that kind of a thing, that could go under my table because um, I have a bunch of stuff under my table that is uh, in, in plastic bags and needs to get organized. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of it is Rainbow Gallery stuff that if I had a place to put it in order, it would be yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll snap a picture of my file drawers. Yes, please. And send them to you. Um. I think that I got, I think I took pictures of my, and put it on my blog of my office in progress. And, yes, that was your last uh, post, yes. Yeah, so, you know, you can tell how. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's why I felt like I asked the question. Really good I am about posting things, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, that was early September, and I felt I could comfortably ask this question at the end of October, but. No. Yes, no, <laughs> no, because, you know, it, you know, it, I don't sit around all day and, and work on Debbie's designs. I feed three people two meals a day. I do laundry. I have to, I'm in charge of house. I, I go to the grocery store. I do all the things that a stay at home uh, wife would do and my business. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. And so, you know, a lot and mostly with my business, what that entails is, okay, I've got an order that I need to get out. So I'm, I'm printing and binding and getting the order out or I'm putting kids together for the next class or I'm doing this or that. And so the organizing and going through and culling stuff out is something that will have to be done when I'm not busy. Mm -hmm. Yep. When am I not busy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that movie. Yeah. 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 The, the Friday oh afternoon God. where you're going to take off and, and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. It never happens. No. Yeah. No, it never happens. And, you know, I was telling my husband, it, it's real easy to feel overwhelmed by what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And so what, what I have to do is approach it like, okay, if I can go through one of my storage bins a day. Yeah. That's all I need to do. Just one a day. I don't have to do all of it today. I don't have to do all of it this week. I just need to work on. And if I get one done in a week, okay. Yep. Yep. I can do that. That's more than you gotten done so far. So <laughs> that's exactly right. And, you know, we did get my videos set up, uh, reconstructed so I can start shooting videos again, which that was important to be able to do that. Yeah. And I, and so, you know, my husband is a computer guy and in, in the move, I found a large whiteboard that he had in his office when he worked on campus in Little Rock mm. and it's now at our house. And so I said, Oh, can I have this? And he goes, yeah, what are you going to do with it? And I said, I'm going to put down all the classes that I have to get ready for and the dates and what I need to do to get ready for. And he goes, so like a spreadsheet, you could do a spreadsheet on your computer. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, I could do a spreadsheet on my computer. It's easier for me to see all of it at a glance Yep. yep. To, to know, okay, I've got 
three in a row where I'm doing the same class. So it makes sense to order all the materials for for that for all three sessions of that class at the same time. Right, right. Yeah, sometimes yeah, I'm with you. Sometimes the spreadsheet in the computer does not get the job done. Yeah, right. when you're sitting there in the chair and you look up and they're on the board, it's quite clear. And yes, exactly. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I yeah, because sometimes the spreadsheet is helpful or the list in your uh, phone or whatever is helpful, and then other times just a piece of paper is. Because I'll do that uh, on my desk. Is I'll take a post-it note and you know, things to do today that I must get done, right. and just put them yes. on there. And yeah. I'm a big list maker. Yeah. And there's something really satisfying with this whiteboard of erasing things that I've done. Yes. Yes. Done. Gone. <laughs> okay. I am ready for this event because I have done everything I need to do for this event. I'm ready for it. Yep. Yep. So it, this is what I'm doing now. I don't know if I'm going to continue doing this or if I'll do something different later, but for now I'm, I'm happy with it. I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, I know, I know how you feel. Yep. Big board yeah. up there. Yep. Yeah, Rod. You know, just put it on a spreadsheet. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I could. No. But, you know, it's like the calendar because I have a Google calendar, I have an Apple calendar, and I have a, a calendar in my phone. Do all of these coordinate with each other? Absolutely no. not. There's no way. No. And so I've got things in my phone that aren't on my Google calendar, and then I've got things on my Google calendar that, that aren't on my phone, and then I lose things. And so, nope, I've got them. I've got the important things like there's I've got my whiteboard divided into sections and one section is proposal deadlines. Yeah, that's the first one so that I can look at a glance and go, OK, I've got a deadline due on December the 30th or I have a deadline due January the 15th. And I can see it immediately so that I can stay on top of it and not come up the day before and go, oh, crap, I've got the proposal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, that whole that whole calendar thing. Now, I I use the Apple calendar because I use Apple devices, so iPad, phone, and laptop, and then everything is coordinated. And and so with for work, people are always saying we're going to have a meeting or a phone call. I'll send you a, a calendar thing. And I used to say, Nah, I don't bother because I don't use it anymore. I just say, Sure, thanks, and then I just delete it. Because the same kind of thing, you just and and I refuse to use the Google Calendar. I have one that works in my phone. I understand it works for me, and I put my things in there, and they stay coordinated. And um, uh, yeah, because you can get caught up in that where you've got two or three different things going, and you can't keep track of anything. Yeah, yeah. and it it's it doesn't, you know, my husband's office set up, so he's got his office all set up upstairs he's got three huge computer monitors on his desk yeah mm -hmm. so that he can have his calendar up on one monitor and the project that he's working on and he can drag things from one screen to the next which i have no clue how that happens but that's his setup and he, that works for him and he's happy with it I'm fine with my whiteboard and my colored <laughs> markers. <laughs> just, just regular, just regular. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go old school. We'll yeah, actually yeah. write something down. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I've been meaning, we've been trying to get to this, or at least I have for some time. I wanted to talk to you about your, your design, your designing in general. I, I don't think we talk enough about that, but these series you, you have, at least three different series of designs that you've done. And the one that every More time, that. yeah, I was afraid of that, but whatever. Um, the, the, the one that sticks in my head all the time is the ones that you design to fit in that tray. So you can swap out all the time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah I, I just think those are the, the neatest things. Cause there's one for spring and one for Christmas and all the, the different things. Tell me, right. how, how did that get started? How did you decide on that tray, that size? How did all that work? Is it, was it just, I did one and, oh, this would work great in a tray, and then you had some more ideas, or did you set out to do a series? How did that all come together? Because I think that's, it, uh, uh, the series is really great. Well, I did, I set out to do a series. Okay. 
And so I've got to go back a little ways. Back when I was just a cross stitcher, before I started designing, before I started doing anything else, I like to cross stitch different things for different holidays. And as you know, framing is quite expensive. Yes. And so one of, one of the first things that I did was there was a, a cross stitch calendar that came out and it was a house in four different, uh, there was the cover of it was the house in four seasons. And then there was a different house for each month. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Oh, that'd be cool. I'm going to stitch that, but I'm going to design, I'm going to stitch it in such a way that I can use the same frames and just switch them out every month. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here looking at it right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I did this 25 years ago and I have kept up with it. I I love to have these little things out. And then another thing you that still I did, swap it every time. I swap it every month. Wow! It just I it's not permanently mounted. Okay, so the what the house for four seasons, which was on the cover of this calendar, is permanently mounted. But the one that's the different house for each month, like the one for Halloween. Or for October is a Halloween castle with a witch flying across the moon. I mean, it's really cute. The one for June is a, 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 chirp, a church with a bride and groom. Mm -hmm. And the one for September is a schoolhouse. And the one for Thanksgiving is, you know, it, it, it's all different houses. And they're all really cute. And I liked them. And another thing that I did was there was a design called Holiday House. And it's a, a house that you stitched. And then you had little different icons that you would put on the door of the uh -huh. house. And so I did that too. And that is where this idea has come from to design one thing that you can use the same frame for without having to pay for expensive framing. And you can use the same tray, the same frame or the same box or whatever, and just switch it out to decorate for the ho different holidays and seasons. So that that's where that came from. So that's where that so that started. So what was the first one you did in that series? The first one I did was called Tricky Treats, and it I I don't really do Halloween. I I'm not a big fan. I I know that there's people out there clutching their broomstick because I said I didn't like Halloween, but you know that's just, just not my thing. But I do like the colors, and so I decided to do Tricky Treats is with Halloween colors, but there's no jack-o'-lanterns there's no witches there's no ghosts there's no pumpkins it's just the colors mm -hmm. and i did the same and so i thought for this particular series i'll design them to go with different seasons and things like that but they will not be overtly connected with one season yeah so tricky treat is greens and purples and oranges and ho 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 is reds and greens and whites and lovey dovey is pinks and purples, and it's you know for for Valentine's Day, but there's not a single heart on it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like about them is exactly yeah. that. Yeah, it's it it suggests the season, the colors are there, but I don't right. feel like it, it doesn't scream Santa Claus or right. Yeah, or yeah, hearts exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know the same. You know, winter blues is icy blues and whites. Touch of Spring is is really very nice spring greens. Uh, I did Falling Leaves. Now that one does have a lot of leaves on it, but it's just fall colors, and it you know it's fine for Thanksgiving, and you know just for people that like to decorate for the holidays, but you know for one reason or another they're not going to do Halloween, but they like the colors. Yeah. Or yeah. you know they they don't do Christmas, but they like red, white, and green. Mm -hmm. Or you know. It, and it, it's like wave the flag is red, white, and blue, but there's not an American flag on it. So, you know, it's fine for Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, Veterans Day. Yeah. Now, when you design French these. French people because yeah. <laughs> it's red, white, and blue. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, yep. Did, when you designed them, did you say, do you put some parameters down? Like I'm going to keep the difficulty at a certain level. How do you go about that? Okay, so the first thing about designing a series for me is that it gives me a de definitive size. So all of these are six by six. 
So the first thing I do is I lay out a six by six. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing was I, I designed them to go into a, a tray or they would also work in a box top, you know, mm -hmm. so if you didn't want the, the guy from patches and planks made my tray for me on my specifications. But it's six by six, so it would fit in a Sudbury box, and there are other things that it would fit in. But he did these, you know, I went and saw him at a trade show, and I loved his things, and I asked him, could you do a, a tray, but I want it to be, you know, um, deep enough to uh, put stuff in if you wanted to, like, fill it with candy or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if a piece is going to be handled that informs the kinds of stitches and threads you want to use because I'm not going to put a lot of Jessica's or crescents or things with long, loose stitches in it that might get caught mm -hmm. from handling being put in and out of the tray. So I selected stitches that by their nature are more suitable for this kind of thing, like road stitches and Smyrna's and satin stitches and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that they will not get caught as you're and you ruin the stitching as you're putting them in and out of a tray. And also I didn't want them to be too highly textured. So if you wanted to use the um, plexiglass insert that came with it, yeah, you could, it's not going to completely smash everything. <laughs> and so, you know, that for that particular series, that, that was the, that was the thought process behind that. Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah, I mean, I just wonder if it, it when you do those things, yeah, do you have to say, all right, I need to limit myself because the minute you say I'm not going to use Jessica's and other things, that, that's a whole set of stitches that just is off limits. And, right. And, yeah, and if you want to keep them from getting snagged, then that defines X number of stitches I can work with. But but then it seems to me like then There's that – There's still thousands that I can use. Right, right. But then that also puts a little <laughs> challenge. Not... Yeah, a little bit, a yeah. little bit because I do – very heavily involved. I mean, I do use a lot of long loopy stitches. And so um, it, it's fun to work within parameters and say, this will work, but I can't do this and this won't work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like the Glamour series. They're all six by six. Yeah. And I am not limited in the kinds of stitches that I use for those, but it is very highly textural. So color, you know, where you might use color to do a pattern it the pattern has to be able to stand alone in a single color mm -hmm. because like i'm thinking of citrine it's all yellow there's no green in it there's no orange in it there's no pink in it there's no blue in it it's just yellow and so uh, a pattern where you might norm like a bargello pattern where you might normally use several different colors to do the design i can't do Right, because yellow and on yellow on yellow. <laughs> it's just... Yellow, yellow, yellow. I mean, it's all yellow. Now, it does have a lot of texture in it, but I also decided when I was doing that series that I would not use any cotton threads. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. Now, yeah, I've got a couple of them. That's right. There's no cotton in them. <laughs> no cotton. It, it's silks and metallics and rayons because I wanted it to feel luxe. Yep. So no cottons. I never, that never hit me. I'll be yeah. darned. Yep. You're right. <laughs> of course you're right. You made them, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Cause yeah, that, and, and those, those have a very, very different feel and look from most of your other stuff. And that, so that's why there's no cotton in right. it at all. Yeah. Right. No cotton. In, there's no pearl cotton. There's no cotton floss. There's silk floss. And in some of them I used silk pearls but not cotton yeah okay that's fun okay and then so like diamond delights now that uh every time i record there's a pillow on it. of course i record at the end of our bed in the bedroom because the sound's right <laughs> but um uh one one of the uh, diamond delights that i finished stares at me the entire time right in, in a pillow so that that <laughs> yeah. became quite a series didn't it yes there's 10 of those and that started from the same that all are the same basic concept it's a diamond in a square and they're all the same size well, what size are they are they 10 by 10 11 by 11 yeah, I, I don't like remember that. Yeah. they're all a diamond in a square 
And my challenge to myself was how many different ways can I configure this so that it's still a diamond in a square? Mm -hmm. And so like the diamond delight one is just, it's the base you can really see it very clearly. The diamonds divided into uh, several different sections and it's a big diamond in a square diamond delight two the diamond is still in the square, but the diamond is not defined, and it's more designed kind of inside out. It looks like a pinwheel, mm -hmm. but it's still a diamond in the square, and it's still the same size as all the rest of them. And then you get up to diamond to like 10, which has, I think, five or six different iterations of the diamond in a square in different sizes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that because that, that, I think... Other, I mean, the Trey series I like just because of the way it works, but the Diamond Delights, when when you lay them all out, and I think I have, I bet I have all but one or two. Uh, when you lay them all out, it's fun to see the variations, and and I I figured that's what was happening there. As, as your challenge was, how many different ways can I do this same basic concept, and and make yeah. it make it different and make it interesting? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're all different colors. They use a lot of different kinds of threads and stitches and things. Some of them have beads. Some of them don't. Some of them have, um, I don't remember if I used hot fix crystals on some of them or not. Um, it, all different things, but they all are the same size and they're all a diamond in a square. Mm -hmm. Now, did you sit, it was that a series where you sat down and said, all right, I'm going to map out as many as I can, or did you just let them come to you over time? I just let them come to me over time and I decided to end it at 10. I could have continued to go. I mean, I still have further ideas for how to do a diamond in a square, mm -hmm. but I decided to end that particular series at 10. Mm. Just because. Yeah. Kind of just because. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> for one thing, they're, they're large and, yeah. I find myself not doing very many large things anymore. Um, they're not comfortable for me to stitch. Okay. So um, to, to manipulate really large stretcher bars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do have long arms and all of that, but you have to sit at a certain angle in order to get to the middle of the, of the piece and all this. And, and I would, I'm most comfortable working on 12 inch or 14 inch stretcher bars. So since I allow three inches <laughs> on each side of the design, that means it's a six by six or an eight by eight. And yep. that's the size I'm most comfortable working with. All right. That, well, that makes some sense because yeah, it's been what tropical punch and Royal garden, Royal garden. That was your last oh, yeah, big huge. one, right? Yeah. The big ones. Yeah, yeah. They're huge. They're really big. Yeah. yeah. And almost, you know, big to work on and big for people to contemplate stitching them and, um, a lot of people, uh, so this is one of the things that I've discovered through, as I've begun proposing things for seminars and things like that, the uh, selection committees don't want big pieces oh. because people don't want to take big things. They want to take something where they have a reasonable expectation of stitching quite a bit of it while they're at seminar. Oh. So that means it's got to be a smaller piece. Yeah. External factors then are dictating the size then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they want to be able to fit it in their suitcase without taking it off of the bars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are big ones like Tropical Punch and, and Royal Garden, are they, for you personally, if you know, all those other factors weren't in play, are they fun to do? Uh, are they a, an interesting challenge? What What's the mental process that goes through? Because, I mean, those are quite involved, both of those. Yeah, they are. Um they were both fun to do. I enjoyed working with the colors that I was working with, and um, I enjoyed the stitches that I was doing. Neither one of them turned out exactly as I had initially envisioned, but that's okay. I still like them. Yeah, because I, I have both of them. I have both of them kitted and have, have never actually put <laughs> canvas on, but I have all the threads. I have the whole shot because I love both of them. Uh, yeah. But I've never. And I yeah. like them too. I really yeah. like the colors. Um, they're very. They're very impactful. Um, oh, yeah. You know, th yeah. They're the kind of thing that if someone saw it hanging on your wall, they go, oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. And not because I designed it, but because, you know, the colors are really interesting. And 
and they are a, a fairly good size. I mean, they yeah. really are. Yeah. So when you say it didn't come out as you wanted, just wasn't, what is it? Like the colors weren't quite right or you had envisioned a little more punchier design. What happens there? Yeah. Yeah. Some, sometimes it's something like that. Um, tropical punch. When I designed tropical punch, I sat down and thought about what kinds of stitches do I really like? What kinds of stitches do I like to stitch? Well, I love double fan doubles. I know that there's a lot of people that, you know, it just drives them crazy. But I think there's like 20 double fan doubles mm -hmm. in Tropical Punch. They're small. And once you've done the first three, you'll whip through the rest of them because you know what you're doing. And you uh, hopefully will trust your hands to remember that they know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of a double fan doubled is getting out of the instructions and letting it happen. Mm -hmm. I, I know there's there's people that are like, oh, but really, in my classes, when I teach them how to do a double fin double, if they will look at what the canvas is telling them to do, they get right through it, and they don't have any trouble with it, and they all say, oh, this was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And so, and I love crescents, and so there's a lot of crescents in there, but, you know, it it breaks down a little bit after you get the initial design done. Uh, or the central part of the design or the parts that you like that you want to design. And then you start filling in the rest of the design mm -hmm. so that you can get to the edge that you're trying to get to or whatever. And so, you know, that's where, you know, sometimes things don't always work out exactly as I had envisioned them, or I couldn't find exactly the right colors that I wanted to use or I was using the colors that I wanted to use and realized that if I do this, it's going to be extremely unbalanced. Uh -huh. and so I better do something different. And, you know, so there, there's a lot of decisions that go into it. Yeah. I'm pleased with it. I like it. You know, it, it, it's not a stepchild by any stretch of the imagination. No, but... no, it's powerful design. There's no question. And every time you see one finished, yeah, it stops you. It just stops you cold. And because it, it's, it's impressive. You know, something like that, do you have to worry about, and worry is not the right word, but do you have to worry about the threads you're using in that they may not be available two or three years from now, or is that just something you can't control so you just ignore and move on? I, I have no control over that, but what I can control is to use threads from people who've been in business for a while mm -hmm. because they are less likely to go out of business. So. I use Krynik, I use Rainbow Gallery, I use DMC, I use Trinway. Uh, Trinway has been around for a long time. A lot of people are not as familiar with Trinway, but they have been around for a long time. And they have a wonderful thread line. And so I use them. Edmar um, Rayons is another line that's been around for a long time. And a lot of people in the cross-stitch uh, side are not familiar with them but if you do brazilian embroidery you know who they are oh. because they're they're really big in brazilian embroidery and so i use threads that have been around for a long time because i have a reasonable expectation that they're going to be around going forward yeah the times that i have strayed from that i have gotten burned uh-huh where, you know, I would meet somebody at a trade show. Oh, these are wonderful threads. I love these new threads. I think I'm going to use these. And then lo and behold, two or three years later, they're out of business. And there's yeah. my design languishing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, as much as I would love to support up and coming new <laughs> thread dyers and things like that, I, I just can't because... Right. I want my designs to have some longevity that 20 years from now, if someone were to pick it up right. and decide they wanted to stitch it, that they would have a reasonable expectation that they wouldn't have to make too many substitutions. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. As much as you encourage people to do their own colors, the reality right. is the majority of people are going to do what you've specified because they saw the picture exactly, and they want that look. And, and so there you are. That's yes. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's uh, Trinway silks, you know, by golly, now I've seen their line and they have beautiful stuff and Curdy Biggs use a lot oh, of their stuff. Uh, yeah, you know why? Because she's in Denver. I know because they're right down the road. Yeah, and she can go look. 
I know. She goes and plays in her, her workroom and picks out the threads yeah, that she no, wants. And yeah. I'm so jealous of that. I can hardly stand it. Yeah. I love the train threads. And I, I, Susan is a delight to work with. Yep. Well, that's, and it's, you know, when I uh, try and go over to the cross stitch world and all the silks that are used there, they never come up. Trainway is just, you never hear about them. It's interesting because, I mean, they're beautiful. They, their line is beautiful. And, oh, yes. Yeah. Huh. Yes. Absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, they have overdyes and solids. They oh, have yeah. silk floss. It, their silk floss is called Harmony, and it's a six-strand floss. So it's real easy to work with. I mean, it, it's like working with DMC, except it's silk. They've got silk ribbons. They've got silk pearl. Uh, well, it, it, it's a cord. Um, they've got uh, the weight that they have that I like the most is called Zen Shen. And it comes in fabulous colors. It has a little bit of a loft to it, and it works great on 18-count canvas. But I think it would probably work on fabric as well. Mm -hmm. And it would be – it's a single-strand, non-divisible, which – and covers great. It it's not as heavy as a number eight pearl. It's got a little bit of a loft to it, a little bit, not a mm -hmm. whole lot. But it it's just a fabulous thread. I just love it. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how something like that just uh, in in one end gets used with some regularity, and then you go to another area of needlework and not even heard of. Right. I have to get I have to get Susan to do a show with me. Oh yes, <laughs> she's a delightful person. Well, I met her two years ago at Nashville, and yeah, we just had, it was just she's a fantastic lady, and yes. um, I think she even Very said she yeah, I think she even said she'd do a show, and then I never followed up. So there's my there's my red flag. I got to do it. Yeah, people need to know well, about and, that. Yeah, and she also has um, some of her sales. Uh, the proceeds go to charity for cystic fibrosis. Yes. And it's a line called 65 Roses and just beautiful, beautiful collection of threads. Absolutely yep. wonderful. Yep. Okay. So I, I applaud her for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. And if yeah, if anybody ever knows or wonders why Curdy Biggs uses that stuff all the time, it's because it's down the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, yes. <laughs> Yeah. And Susan says, come over and play in my workroom. Right. Curdy goes, oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be a fly in the wall in those sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, folks, right there. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's yep. it. All right, Debbie. It's been ages, but always a blast. Well, I always love talking to you, and I hope that our our listeners – get a little kernel of something useful in our yep. ramblings. <laughs> oh, I think so. I think so. All right. This time it'll only be two or three weeks for the next one. So there we have it. Oh, right. That's wonderful. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks to everybody for listening. Thank you. Thank you.